What's up, guys? Rick here with your betting and one and done preview for this week's Olympic Games. I'm absolutely stoked for it. The content schedule this week, pretty similar to most weeks. DFS preview, that's already out. There will be two live chats on Wednesday, your 3 p.m. Eastern live chat. That's whatever you want to talk about. That's ownership. It's question and answer. It's all that good stuff for the Olympics. And then 8.15 p.m. Eastern time is your jock market power hour. Same place, Rick Run Good YouTube channel. There is not a jock market contest for the Olympics. So what we're going to do is in-depth, deep dive strategy. I'll, I'll throw the data up. We can talk about uh, the, the best and worst performances, the areas of the board you want to target. So this is really supposed to be interactive. Anything you want to ask, Throw it in the chat. You can do it now, and we will get through as many questions as possible. Also, I am doing a giveaway uh, for my coveted Sung J M custom foot joys signed. I talked about it on the Monday DFS preview show. Um, if Sung J medals, I will give those away. So I would be happy to see a medal. I would be sad to see those go. Otherwise, let's jump into this week's betting and one and done preview. All right, here's the tournament predictor tool on rickrungood.com, and it might look a little bit different. This is, um, you know, I had a data issue last week, and I figured I might as well just rebuild this tool and make it better after I fixed it. So that's exactly what I did. So uh, a thousand simulations of this tournament, and then it is compared to uh, the odds across the board at some of these books and see where there's value. So uh, also I included... Uh, the likelihood that each golfer medals this week, because I know that that is uh, going to be a bet that that guys are going to want to make. So uh, Colin Morikawa won my simulation 12.2% of the time. Now he is very short odds, six and a half, seven to one across the board. But my argument would actually be, we've seen guys this short. You know, we've seen John, what was John Rahm at Torrey Pines? Eight to one, seven and a half to one, something like that. Uh, Bryson at the US Open. I mean, we've seen numbers like this and the fields that we've seen those numbers in are much deeper, much bigger. There's a cut. The argument would be that if you ever wanted to uh, bet a, a guy in the single digits like this, now would be the time. Half of the field probably doesn't have a chance to win this. In fact, um, over my 1,000 simulations, 37 different golfers won the simulation at least once, and 11 different golfers won 4% uh, of the time. So that's really where the win equity lies. It lies at the top. So if you wanted to ever do this, I think you should do it. Also, um, I'm kind of throwing my normal handbook out the window, right? Where I take uh, my bankroll and how much I'm willing to spend each week. And then I, I take the odds and say, okay, you know, I can bet one guy here, one guy there, or I can bet two guys in this spot. I'm kind of throwing it out the window this week. You know, we've waited five years for this. It is uh, a situation where, to me, this is a much more recreational wagering week. So the way that I'll probably do this is Morikawa at the top. Um, after Morikawa, uh, Xander, JT, and Hovland, uh, along with Paul Casey, win between 7 and 8% of the, my simulations. Now, Paul Casey is the interesting one. And this is why I kind of like the fact that the way I rebuilt this tool. Because you have Paul Casey, who uh, I have winning the sim 7.1% of the time. Well, on DraftKings at 12 to 1, that's not a great value. Um, I, at FanDuel, at 14 to 1, it's, it's okay. Um, but at William Hill and at BetMGM... He's 16 to one. And now that becomes one of the better values on the board because of how often he's winning it compared to the implied odds of those numbers. Uh, so that's why I love this grid because you can quickly identify where he is a value. If you click this little button up here in the top right hand corner, it says find free bets in your state. That takes you to rickrungood.com slash bets and shows you the offers that are currently available in your state for these books so that you can actually bet them. But definitely worth shopping on some of these numbers. So I will probably go um, Morikawa Casey, uh, especially because I can get that at 16 to 1. And then I'm kind of not thrilled about the next range. I think that uh, Joaquin Neiman is really interesting, right? Neiman is a guy who does not get the credit that he deserves. He is one of the best young golfers that we have on the PGA Tour, and he putts well on bent grass. In fact, it's his best surface. He is much longer off the tee than people want to give him credit for, ninth in driving distance, much improved flat stick, 23rd on tour in strokes gained putting, and he makes a lot of birdies, which is always handy when you are guaranteed four rounds. So Joaquin Neiman kind of is the intersection of my simulation and my brain, like my heart, I guess I should say, of of trying to, um, you know, feel through this board and also 
find guys that did well in the simulation. And you'll note that uh, Neiman, his best odds are at points bet 25 to 1 currently. That's what makes him the best value. There's also going to be a huge narrative around the uh, around the two South Korean players. We know if they medal, uh, they are uh, not required to do the mandatory military training, uh, which would take two years off of their playing career. Uh, so Sung J M is going to get a lot of FOMO bets. Uh, si Woo Kim going to get a lot of FOMO bets. And who am I to tell you that you should not be involved in those? You know, we waited five years for this, right? And uh, you get one crack at it. And who am I to tell you to not put your money on those guys? What I will say is this, from a statistical standpoint, the advanced metrics around Sung J.M. are not nearly as good as I would hope they would be coming in. Now, we know that he skipped out on uh, the Open Championship to focus on this event and to get ready, so you know how important it is to him. But I worry about uh, the driver being a little bit erratic over his last four starts, the approach game. That's been better, but it still feels like a bit of whack-a-mole for me for Sung J.M. The one that I think is actually more interesting is Siwoo for a couple of reasons. Um, he is incredibly volatile, which is, in this situation, very good. Just as likely to finish first and as he is last, uh, it, it is a situation where um, you want to tap into that volatility, you want to tap into the upside, and what I also noticed is, you know, remember that John Rahm and, and Bryson DeChambeau were both in this field, and when they were removed, everybody's number cratered, Right. Except really Siwoo's and the guys down in this 50, 60, 70 to 1 range. It didn't move all that much. Maybe five points. Points bet still hanging a, a 60 on him while uh, FanDuel is hanging a 42. So you certainly do want to be kind of shopping this around. But that number did not move nearly as much as, as I think it could have, um, which I think is noteworthy. I draw the line on guys who can actually win this golf tournament, probably at Cameron Smith. Uh, outside of that, you get to, you know, Alex Norin and, you know, these guys can play well, but it's probably unlikely that they win. It's, it's likely that they play spoiler or they finish top five, top 10, top 20, which is certainly going to be some viable betting options this week. The first one that stands out to me is Mackenzie Hughes. This is a guy who, um, it, the stage is certainly not going to be too big for him. We know that he slept on the 54 hole lead at Torrey Pines. We know that he is a bit reliant on the putter, but that putter can carry him Sixth place finish at the open championship. He's made moves in some of these, you know, like the last year's or championship, I believe he made a big move in. This is not too big of a stage for him to play spoiler on, especially if that putter gets hot. And then, you know, if you've watched this show for the past couple of weeks, you know that Mito Pereira has a special spot in my heart. He's getting more and more comfortable. Uh, he is he is the uh, Chilean teammate of Joaquin Neiman. I, I think that is going to be uh, someone that I'm going to be investing uh, in for, you know, potentially top 10 situations. And then the other guys are... Uh, Rosner and Arnis. So Adri Arnis, I believe is how he pronounces it, uh, from Spain. If you go and look at his European tour results, which is where he normally resides, uh, he plays all the big events. He plays well in the big events, especially when the PGA Tour guys go over there. You know, He had three top 12 finishes earlier this year in events that were won by legitimate top-tier players. I think it was Matt Fitzpatrick, Paul Casey, and Terrell Hatton won those three events. He was inside the top 12 on all of them. Those fields were much stronger, uh, and they, you know, a lot of them had cuts and things like that. So this is uh, someone that I would be targeting. And then, um, you know, Rosner is, is kind of the sneaky, and you can see the difference here. The sim, the sim kind of loves this guy. Gives him a zero. He did not win a single simulation, uh, but he finished inside the top five four percent of the time, inside the top ten eleven percent of the time, and inside the top 20, 31 percent of the time. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you compare it to his peers here, it is a lot, right? It, it's significantly more. It's three times uh, more likely to finish inside the top twenty as Honorban Lahiri, who I think is going to be pretty popular this week. Uh, uh, and Rosner, the reason for that is while he has a small sample size, the sample size of his um, of his approach metrics specifically are are phenomenal. You know, he had gained I think it was eight and a half strokes on approach at the PGA Championship, another seven and a half at the Memorial. It is it is that really good ball striking that the model loves, and it's giving him a lot of credit for, even though it is a small sample size. Um, I'm going to turn our attention a little bit to the head to head betting matchups here because. I know uh, this is going to be a really good way to deploy some funds this week. And there was a couple that really caught my attention. Uh, the first one right out of the gate was Abraham Answer over Christian Bezadenhout. I, I love Answer, um, but I'm wondering if he is actually minus 150, if he should be that big of a favorite. 
And the answer is, um, yeah, he should be. So I'm doing this since the start of 2021. I have answer winning this over Bez uh, 61% of the time, which makes him minus 157, which means, okay, this is probably a no bet because DraftKings has him at minus 150. So yes, you probably should be winning it that often. Let's do, oh, this is a really interesting one. Corey Connors and Sung J M. I think we could be, I think we might be surprised about this. Yeah, I have Corey Connors winning this in a big way, 65, 63% of the time. His money line should be minus 174. It's only minus 120. This would be a Corey Connors bet over Sung J.M. And there's a couple of things that I think are driving this. There is a lot of positive sentiment on Sung J.M. this week in the outright market and in all markets, which impacts his number. There is also, for some reason, a negative sentiment on Corey Connors, or at least maybe an indifferent sentiment on Corey Connors. You know, from the spring into the summer, he was one of the most popular players. He was uh, popular on, on all DFS formats. People were betting him like crazy. And because we did not get a resolution, we didn't get a big win. We didn't get this huge return. Uh, people are fatigued with Corey Connors. They've just moved on. And he's still piling up top 20 finishes. He's still playing well. He's still one of the better ball strikers at a place that uh, should certainly be rewarding that. So I think that a combination of, of, of opposite sentiments is is noteworthy here. So um, Connors for me would be a bet over Sung J M. And then I thought there was one more. Yeah, I think this one is kind of interesting too. Paul Casey over over Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed, you know, you could argue about whether this course fits him, but the fact is he's not getting there till Wednesday afternoon. He doesn't even know if it fits him. He's not going to see this course. And even without that, Casey, I have winning this 64% of the time. He should be minus 182. He's minus 115. And uh, to me, this is a bet on Paul Casey. And also, a lot of the metrics that you see on Paul Casey are probably not as good as they should be, right? The, if you go from like start of 2021 you know, PGA Tour metrics, you miss out on his European Tour victory, which uh, is certainly would have helped his stats. So he's actually probably better in the advanced metrics than we even want to give him credit for. One and done this week, and I'll make this quick because a lot of you are probably like, Rick, what are you talking about one and done? But I know if I don't do one and done, I'm going to get emails that are like, but, you know, we use uh, the resale value of a gold medal to determine uh, the payout. Like, you guys come up with the wackiest stuff, the formats. I see it all the time. I love it. Uh, so I'm just going to run through this pretty quickly. You're right for the Rick run good, for the run good one and done. There is no pick this week. We have five events left. It is a WGC FedEx St. Jude, Wyndham, then we get to the playoffs, Northern Trust BMW Tour Championship. Before you email me, the rules for the Tour Championship have been in the same place all year long. They're under rickrungood.com slash OAD. Click view rules. We are using the starting strokes. We are not using the full bonus money. We're using a percentage of it. All of the rules as they have been for 15 months are in, uh, maybe not that long, for 10 months are in that spot on that page, exactly where they've always been. Um, now, if you actually do have to make a pick this week, so for example, you know, I do that article, that weekly article for uh, Golf Digest, and we are making picks this week. Uh, I actually have Hideki left, which I think is quite interesting. I didn't burn Hideki earlier in the year. Um, I get to use him at a place where, yes, he's going to be under a lot of pressure, but it is a place that should reward ball striking. It is a place that he won. Uh, two events on the West course. He's going to play the East course, but he should be very, very familiar with the conditions and the course and, and everything that's going on there. But really what you want to do is if you need to make a pick this week, you're trying to find the intersection of guys that are big beneficiaries of this format uh, that you're not going to want to use later. So you probably have already used or want to use Morikawa and Xander and JT and Hovland and Rory. If you haven't, use them. Uh, Casey and Reed probably fall into that boat. Answer would probably fall into that boat or, or could be usable, but you've probably already used him, right? He's really good at the beginning of the year. As the calendar turns, that's a good spot for him. So you've probably already used him. So it leaves us with a couple of options here. I do think that Cam Smith is, is a guy that you probably or could not have used at this point. Uh, that would be a, a good deploy here. You know, he's like the 11th shortest odds on the board. Bent grass is his best putting surface. He is found himself in the winner's circle already this year with Mark Leishman at the Zurich Classic. He is not afraid of a big stage. He is probably the prototypical perfect combination of guy you might not have used, guy you don't plan on using, and guy that benefits from this being a really small weak field where only 
a few guys have a lot of win equity. Cam Smith is probably the perfect combination of that. If you have to go down a little bit further, I think you have to start getting into some of the European guys here. Uh, Guido Migliozzi, you could take a kind of a flyer that if what we've seen from him in recent major championships is the real deal, that this would be a perfect international competition for him where he can thrive. He is not going to be intimidated uh, by anybody here. He's not going to be intimidated by the course. And if he is the real deal, he can make a big move. The other guy would be... I had another guy picked out here, didn't I? Um, Let me think about this. Oh, I'm looking right past his name. The other guy would be Garrick Higo. Um, And Higo is interesting from a standpoint of... He's a winner, right? Kind of no matter what the stage is, he wins golf tournaments. Um, you know, because he come, burst onto the scene at Palmetto a month ago, uh, probably all of you have him available. So that would be someone that you could also deploy as well. All right, down and dirty, quick and to the point. I'll see you on Wednesday for two different live chats, 3 p.m. Eastern and 8.15 p.m. Eastern, both of them on the Rick Run Good YouTube channel. Also, um, I guess by 8.15 p.m. Eastern, this event has probably already started. So while we're talking through jock market and talking through all that fun stuff, we can at least keep an eye on who's at the top of the leaderboard. So it should be fun. Fun little watch party, fun little sweat. Tweet me at Rick Run Good. Leave a comment below. Best of luck, and I'll talk to you guys soon.